Day 90, we're very close to the end of this 100 days. But today, we're going to look at Jason. And no, we're not going to be staring at a guy on the subway. We are going to be looking at JSON, which is a format for getting data from other websites. JSON, JSON, or JavaScript Object Notation, is a text-based way of explaining how a 2D dictionary might look. Why do we care about this? Well, the reason we care is because we're about to explore the world of web APIs. In other words, talking to a website, getting a message back and decoding it and trying to understand it. Most of the time, that message will be in JSON format. We need to take that from the internet, we need to pull it back in, and we need to read it as if it was a 2D dictionary in Python for it to make any sense at all. We're going to start today by doing a simple grab of some JSON data from a website that is free to use. Luckily, the JSON library is built in, but we do need to use requests again because we do need to talk to a different website and get some information from it. And we're going to start by importing requests. We're going to use the API of a website called randomuser.me, which generates a fictitious random user with a bunch of information about their address, their contact details, and even profile pictures that we can later extract. So the way we do that is we need to send a message to their API. Now, randomuser.me's website shows us exactly what we're going to get back. We're going to get back a bunch of information that is linked to a fictitious user. How do we get that? Well, how to use is pretty straightforward. They're talking about how to get it through JavaScript, but all we need is this website address there. So we need that, which we're going to send a message to, and that is going to send us a message back in JSON format. I'm going to create a variable called result to hold what gets sent back, and I'm just going to use requests.get, and in the brackets for that, I'm going to give the API link. What that's going to do, it's going to send a message to that website. Whatever the website sends back, it's going to store in result. That should be in JSON format. Let's just print it out at the start to see what's happening. Now, that's not much use to us. What does that mean? Now, a response 200 is basically the other website saying, cool, here's your stuff, which is great. But I need to pick that apart a little bit more. We've used requests when we've been doing Flask before. We use it to get the header out of the login information. It's not the header we need now, though. It's the body of the message in JSON format. Luckily, results.json, brackets, brackets, it'll read it and interpret it. And you can see here, there's a lot going on there. Now, that looks like a bunch of random text. So let's see if we can get it printed out in a nicer way. We need to set our, our user to results.json. Now, when we run that, we're not going to get any output because we're not telling it to print anything. But now that we've got it stored there, we can do a built-in pretty print function. If I import JSON as well, then I'll be able to do this. The json.dumps function prints out every single part of the 2D dictionary. This is particularly powerful for us because we don't know anything about this JSON file. And you can see here from the printout the way it's indented. We've got a bunch of first level dictionaries. We've got results. Within that, we've got things like gender, name, which is broken down into title first and last, location. This has given us a bunch of data. But let's see if we can print out something like the person's full name. Well, let's see if we can do it in an F string. So I need to print out their first name. So I'm going to be printing out user. Results, name. I'm going to leave it at that to start with. Just check I've got that first correct piece of data. Go to the bottom. I'm getting a crash. Let's turn this line off so we can see what we're doing. We print results. We get all that data there. In results, one of them should be name. And we should just see the name data now. Because results is actually a list. It is the amount of results we've got back. Because this website's only going to give us one result, we can just put a zero in there and just get the same result each time. Then we're going to get first name. Great. But let's use that now to see if we can pull in the user's exact name. So let's see if we can construct it with an F string. Do that, base, that, that should be last. Instead of printing out that now, let's just print out the name and let's see what we've got. There we go. Now, all we need to do to pull the right data out is to run it each time and it's going to go and get a different person's details from the website. And as you can see here, we're getting a different name each time, which is brilliant. So I'm going to try now to access the user's username. I've already printed out the URL of the image that we've got. Now, of course, in Replit, if I click that, I can see what that image looks like, which is great. What I want to do, get that image, download it and save it locally. Luckily, because a JSON file is just a big dictionary, I can easily pass what's there and I can easily see what's going on. So I'm going to use requests to go and get that image from the internet. 
but what am I doing with it? Because it's not appearing in my files tree. Okay, so we need to open a file just like we've done before, F open. Now, it looks like a JPEG given what's there on the left-hand side. So we're gonna open a file called image.jpg and we are going to make sure that it's in W mode, W for write, so it opens the file each time. We're gonna do f.write picture.content. That should put the image directly in the file. Then we're gonna close it so it gets saved and let's run it and see what happens. Ah, now this error is very important. We've seen this before. It says that the argument must be a string, not bytes. Well, we've seen something similar. We're not gonna cast it as a string. We're actually gonna change the write mode. The write mode W only works with text. We've got a special new one called the WB, write in binary. That means it'll write the actual data of the image to our REPL. And over in our file tab, we've got our image and it's brought it in. Now I'm just bringing the small version there, which is why it's a bit pixelated but you could bring in the larger image if you wanted to by doing that, clicking run. I'll go and get that larger image and save it into our file. So we've got a program here that can go off and get an image and the name of a random user, which is pretty cool. Last thing, let's go back a little bit to where it was just printing out the person's name. Fantastic. Now, I've already said that zero says that there's only one result. So we could use a loop actually to go through that if we wanted to. We could say for person in the square brackets, results. Now, how does this change what we're doing here? Well, first we need to indent it. Secondly, this part has now become person. So it actually becomes a little bit more readable to be able to do that. You'll see here we're only getting one result and that's because it's only sending us one. But with this loop, everything becomes a lot more readable. Everything becomes a lot nicer. And if they were to send us more than one result, we can pull that data in there common problems with JSON data. One of the key things that can happen is the website doesn't send things back. Okay, that's fair enough. One of the things we can pull out of the request is we can pull the status code. So we can very quickly say if result.statuscode. So if we print that now, you'll see that we get a code of 200, which means all's good. So all we really need to do is put an if here. And this means that if we get anything other than a 200 code, we're going to get an error message, which is good because we do need to tell the user that I wasn't able to access that data. I wasn't able to talk to the API. A little bit more conversation with the user in this case is better for that exact reason. APIs are finicky because they exist on a different server on somebody else's computer sitting elsewhere on the internet. And JSON itself is really nice because it's just a text-based way of sending you a dictionary. The user on their computer sets up how they want that JSON to look though. So you need to understand it. You need to take a bit of time to read it and look at it with the pretty print and see if you can get it to output what you want. Once again, I've broken some code. See if you can get this outputting everything it should be. I would like you to use the code for randomuser.me and I would like you to pull in 10 different users. You could do this in a for loop, sending 10 different requests. Here's the clever bit though. I would like you to save medium quality version of that user's pictures as a file, which is their first name, a space, their surname, .jpg. And I'd like you to save that inside the REPL. When you run it, you should end up with 10 different pictures with different names. That's what I want you to do to show that you understand JSON. When you're done, share it with us in the community by publishing it and use the hashtag replit 100 days of code so we can see what you've done. Tomorrow, what's brown and sticky? A stick. Okay, my jokes are not great. We've seen my writers need help. Let's see if we can write me an app that will generate jokes for me. Hey, hey.